Hello and welcome to Com Science Simplified. In today's video, we are going to do something different. We are going to learn more about the blockchain technology, how a blockchain works by actually building one of our own. I'll drop the link for the website that we'll be using so that you can go there and check it out for yourself and build your own blockchain. So let's get started. So this is the website that we'll be looking into. It's called blockchaindemo.io and the link will be in the description. The website also has an inbuilt demo. So let's go through that to understand more about it. So it tells here that this is a block and a blockchain is basically a collection of blocks. So let's see what a particular block of this blockchain is made up of. Here we can see that a block consists of these properties, an index, a timestamp, a hash, a previous hash, some data and some nonce. Now we'll look into what each of these means one by one. We can also see that these properties are present on the current block, which is the Genesis block, which is the first block of every blockchain. Here we can see the data, the previous hash, the hash of this current block, the timestamp on which it was created and the nonce. Now let's see what each of these means in detail. First things first, the index. The index represents the position of that particular block in the blockchain. This being the Genesis block, it has a special significance because this has an index of zero, which is what we see written here. Every blockchain needs to have a Genesis block. That block is mostly added by the creator of the blockchain. Next coming to the timestamp. This is very easy. This is the timestamp at which the block was created. It is mainly used to keep the blockchain in order. Next we come to the hash. Now the hash is a very important property of any block in a blockchain. Right now it looks like a bunch of random numbers, but it actually has some meaning. The way this hash is created is that several properties of this block are taken and then fed into a function. That function works on those properties and gives us a unique hash. The significance of this hash is that when given the same properties as input, this hash would give us exactly the same string every time. And that is very important as you'll see ahead. There are also rules which decide whether a hash is valid or not. For the purpose of this blockchain, a hash is considered a valid hash if and only if it is prefixed by three zeros in the beginning. Now this is where the hash function for this particular blockchain is explained. We see that the function takes in the index, the previous hash, timestamp, data and the nonce and then gives us a hash. So in this example, it takes zero, which is the index of this Genesis block. The previous hash is also zero because there is no previous block. Then there's the timestamp and then the data, which is welcome to blockchain demo 2.0. This last part is the nonce. We'll come to it in just a bit. The nonce, as you can see here, is a number that is used to find a valid hash. Now, how does this work? We know here that the hash function is taking in several parameters as the input, but if we take all these parameters and feed it into a hash generator function, we might not be sure that the hash would be prefixed by three leading zeros. That is why what we do is we start from the number zero as the nonce and then we keep incrementing this number until we land upon such a number that leads to a hash with three leading zeros. This process of generating a valid nonce for a particular block of data is actually the process of mining the block on the blockchain. Now let me show you a live preview of that. Let me change the data a little bit. Instead of saying welcome to blockchain demo 2.0, let me say welcome to amazing blockchain demo. As soon as I update the data, I see that the hash is now showing in red, which means that this is not a proper hash. I need to now generate a new nonce that generates a valid hash with this new data, the new previous hash, and a new timestamp. I'll click on this button. This has generated a valid nonce for me, which means that 3004 is a valid number for which when I feed in this particular data, it generates me a hash with prefix as three zeros. That means this block is again valid and the hash for the Genesis block has now changed. Next, let's come to the data mutation part of it, which is a very important property of every blockchain. Once we edited the data that was stored in this block, the hash became invalid. And thus we need to compute the hash again because the hash generation function for every block takes in an input parameter, which is the hash of the previous block. Tampering with the previous block will make all the blocks that are coming after it completely invalid. So to see that in effect, we'll generate three blocks. 
and then we'll make some modification to the genesis block for adding a new block i'll just input some data and then click on add new block let me add one more so now we have three blocks here let's change some data in the first block and try to tamper with it as soon as i added an exclamation mark to this data which is stored in this block the hash for this particular data got changed because this hash acts as an input for generating the hash of the next block we can see that the hash of the next block also has become invalid and this is how mutating just one value of any one block in the entire blockchain leads to the corruption of the blockchain in order to fix this we'll have to mine each of the block from the starting so if i click on this icon we'll get a new nonce for it with this previous hash we'll have to mine the second block we'll again get a new nonce value for it and a fresh hash will get generated with that previous hash we now mine the third block a fresh nonce and a fresh hash has got generated for it so here we can clearly see how blockchain corruption works in real time those are some of the aspects of a blockchain that are very important but that is not the entire picture the blockchain actually becomes important when several peers join the network and they each have their own blockchain which might be different by a few blocks we can also simulate the same on this site by using this add peer button but we'll look into that in a future video in the meanwhile feel free to visit the site play around with it create your own blockchain add blocks see how the mutation effect comes into the picture when we modify any data that is stored in a block and explore it as you wish so that's it for today's video that was a small demo about how the blockchain technology works by creating one of our own hope you liked it and thanks for watching